Hello there, buddy. Majimon here, and welcome back to some more Pokemon Platinum version. In the last episode, we went on a grand quest to find the famous Professor Rowan in hopes of getting ourselves our very first Pokemon. And while things didn't go exactly the plan, we ended up with what our objective was. We got ourselves our very first Pokemon, Turtwig, the grass type starter. And I'm very happy about that. Like I mentioned last time, Turtwig's my favorite of the three. I like it quite a bit. It's one of, it, when it fully evolved, it's one of my favorite starter Pokemon of all time, and I'm pretty happy with what we ended up with. So thank you for voting for him. Mucho gracias, mon amis, or something like that. <laughs> and then we got that out of the way and got ourselves our first Pokemon. We want to go visit Professor Rowan in San Jim Town, which is apparently over here to the right, because we have nothing on us. We have no Pokeballs. We don't even know, really know what we're doing at the moment. We kind of just have a Pokemon with us now, which is pretty cool, but, uh... I think we can learn a little bit more about what we should be doing. So with that being said, I think it's time we head on out to the right and enter our first batch of Tall Grass. And as you can imagine with what everyone's been worrying about for while playing this game so far, Tall Grass is normally where you can encounter wild Pokemon. However, we got lucky and didn't run into any wild Pokemon here, so uh... There's that, I guess. And hello there, young lassie. What do you have to say? If your Pokemon's uh, health, that's its HP, is getting low, you should go home and get some rest. We'll be talking about the stats in due time, however, if you play an RPG before, a lot of these stats are going to make a lot of sense to you immediately. And you know what? I'm feeling kind of bald. Let's run through this tall grass. <laughs> and there we go, our very first wild Pokemon. And it's a... The Mighty Lord himself, Badoof! The iconic, the legendary, the one and only. So before we get going into battling this Bidoof here, I think now is probably a good time. I was holding off on it for the first episode because we already had a lot to explain, but I think now it's about time we talk about ourselves something that's pretty important to Pokemon, or any RPG in general, in fact. That is... Pokemon Stats. So as you can see over here, there are six stats total on the bottom screen you can see over there. We have HP, Attack, Defense, Special Attack, Special Defense, and Speed. And going from top to bottom, allow me to explain what these are. HP is pretty simple. It is your total HP points. If it hits zero, your Pokemon will faint and can no longer be used for the battle unless you have a way to bring it back from being fainted. Which, uh, we won't be saying that for quite some time, but it's important to note that it does exist. Our next stat is the attack stat, which will vary how much damage you're going to be doing for physical attacks. Defense helps you resist against physical attacks. Special attack is the same thing as attack, but for special attacks. Special defense is the same thing for defense, except for special defense. And its speed stat is probably the most interesting, and in my opinion, probably the most important one of them all. The speed stat is the stat that determines who goes first within a battle. Whatever, whatever Pokemon on the field has the highest speed will be moving first. So say this Bidoof had like 10 speed, and my Turtwig has 9 speed, even though I'm level 6, that Bidoof will go before me because it has more speed. So it's something to keep in mind. All these stats will go up as you level up your Pokemon, which you level up with even experience, as we've seen before. Pretty simple stuff to get the grasp of, but it's pretty important stuff as well, so it's good to understand what's going on on the bottom screen there. And also something else that's pretty important to talk about is what's over there on the left. Abilities. And I kind of failed to talk about abilities because all the starters basically have the same ability, but it just changes a little bit depending on their type. But uh, since we now have Turn Twig with us, how about I talk about our ability here? Our ability being Overgrow. It says pairs of grass type moves in a pitch. What this actually translates to is that your grass type moves will get 1.5 times the power on them when Turtwig has less than one third of his HP. Which is actually a pretty powerful ability. It doesn't come into play super often, but whenever it does, you will feel the power difference. 1.5 times the damage is really strong. So it's pretty cool. And that being said, I think I've yapped on enough for this battle. I'll save the rest of the tutorial stuff for the upcoming battles, but I wanted to get the stats out of the way first because pretty important stuff. And then I'm going to stat that out of the way. I should also mention that Turtwig here, his secondary move I've not been using yet on screen here, is Withdraw. And that is actually a defense raising boost, which I guess I can use now just for demonstration purposes. So this will actually raise my defense side, as you can see here, which means I will take less damage from physical attacks. However, since I already am taking one damage from this Bidoof, it actually doesn't really do any change anything, because at very minimum, whenever you take damage, you'll take at least one damage. You can never take zero damage of Pokemon, unless you're just flat out immune to the attack you're taking. There we go. Tutorial mode, done for the time being. Let's talk to this fellow over here. Hi, I work at the Pokemart. Did you know that Pokemon's health is measured by hit points? We just learned about that, actually. If Pokemon's under the HP, it faints and can't battle anymore. If Pokemon's HP gets low, you should heal with a potion. Here, let me give you a potion as a free sample. First one's free. It'll automatically go into the medicine pocket of your bag. Well, that's what I call freaking advertising, baby. Free product? You love to see it. So since we just got ourselves our very first item, how about we talk about the bag over here? The bag here is where you keep all of your items, and you're gonna be using this menu a lot, so get used to it. 
The first uh, slot in your bag over here is for, for general items. The second one is for medicine, as including this potion that we just got. It heals 20 HP upon being used. It's a one-time use item, but obviously it heals 20 HP, so can't shake, uh, can't shrug that off. Pretty good, pretty handy to have. Next, we got the Pokeball slots, which we don't have any Pokeballs for the time being. And then the rest of these slots, I'll talk about them as they come relevant. Because a lot of these are items we're just not going to be seeing for a little bit of time. However, the last thing I will mention is the key items over here. Which is where all your important, like, story items and whatnot go into. So, uh, keep that in mind. Or should I say, key that in mind. Or, keep... I was trying to make a pun, it didn't really work out. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> trying to make a pun, I kind of botched it though. It happens. Can't, they can't all be winners, as we all know. Uh, turn to a ground two, more B-dupes. Except this one's level three. Oh my god, the horror. They're getting stronger. But so are we. And I, I actually, I, I wasn't kidding. That B-dupe actually did, uh, it did more damage. It did like three more damage than the other B-dupes. This guy's strong. Unfortunately, my turn twig is stronger. Hiya. And there we go. Another level up for our turn twig. Level seven. And as you can see, when I get my level up here, all the stats that I just mentioned, you can actually see how much they increase per level. And there's a new stats. Not bad. Pretty handy stuff. And what do you gotta say, young man? The legend's just one jump. Jump down for a shortcut to Twin Leaf Town. These here are his legends as he just mentioned. And I won't lie to you, when I was a kid, I had a hard time figuring what these were supposed to be. I thought they were like fences when I was a kid, but no, it makes more sense. But they are legends. These are one-way shortcuts, so if I were to try and move over it, I can go down it, but I can't go up it. Because I guess our tiny little legs just can't climb up there. But uh, keep that in mind. It's a one-way shortcut. But more importantly... Sanjin Town. Oh, there you are. Please, come with me. The professor is waiting. How did you guys know I was coming? But okay. Uh, this is it. Our professor, a Pokemon research lab. Let's go. Thud. What the? Oh, it's you, Zachary. The little guy's not as scary as much as he is. It's totally out there. Oh, it doesn't matter, Zachary. I'm out of here. See you later. What did he mean by that? C come back here, young man. Explain yourself. Wow, what was that? That's what I'm saying. The adventurer seems to be uh, really impatient. Well, anyway, let's go inside. Well, well, look who's here. Zachary, was it? Let's have a look at your Pokemon. Hmm, I see. This Pokemon seems to be rather happy. Hmm, I trust you that Church Egg was no mistake, it seems. Well, would you like to give it a nickname? So this is an interesting feature in Pokemon that I'm sure most of you are familiar with. You can actually nickname your Pokemon and it will be called that for the rest of the game. However, you can change it. However, you have to find a certain particular person who can change it in the game. So whatever you nickname your Pokemon, you're going to be using for quite some time. So just keep that in mind. And frankly, there is a certain series of games that I'm quite fond of that has a certain turtle character who I'm also quite fond of. So since this being our first Pokemon, I think I'll do just, I think I'll nickname it after a very, very iconic turtle that I'm going to hope most of you watch this know who I'm talking about because I love the series this character's from. I'm not going to say what it is, I'm not going to spoil it. Well, not spoil it, but you know what I mean. We'll see if anybody knows. He shall be Bentley the Turtwig. Hmm, okay, I see. When you're happy with that nickname, I sure am. When I first saw you two about to step into the tall grass with a Pokemon, I was shocked. I was astonished by these foolhardy children. But now you've astonished me in an entirely different way. Already, there is a bond going between you and that Pokemon. I feel privileged to have met you. I'm sure Turtwig feels the same way about you. That's all I ask you to cherish that Turtwig of yours. I will, man. <laughs> I love my Turtwig. <laughs> I'm so glad you're kind towards Pokemon. If you weren't, I'd have to... Oh, I just can't say it. Uh, what, you're gonna kill me? I mean, what? Uh, anyways. <laughs> Let's move on to the main topic. There is something I want you to do for me. I'm going to probably introduce myself first. My name, as you know, is Rowan. I study Pokemon. First of all, I want you to know exactly what kinds of Pokemon live in the Sinnoh region. To do so, it is necessary to collect data using the Pokedex. This is what I wish to ask of you. I want to entrust you with this Pokedex. Will you use it to record data on all the Pokemon Sinnoh for me? You can say no here, but you know, this like empowering music is playing at the moment, and you know, he kind of did give me a turt twig, and you know, I guess it's only fair. Hmm, good answer. With this, we get ourselves the Pokedex. 
that Pokedex is a very high-tech device. You are unable to record any data on any of the kind of Pokemon you encounter. Zachary, I ask that you go everywhere and meet every kind of Pokemon in this region. I've got one too. When you walked up to round 201 with your Pokemon, what did you feel? I lived for 60 years, even now I get a frill when I'm with a Pokemon. Now, you should know that there are countless Pokemon in this world. That means there are just as many frills waiting for you out there. Now go! Zachary, your grand adventure begins right now! The Pokemon that I met for the first time was a Piplup. If you would have chosen a Piplup in round 21, we'd have the same Pokemon now. Kind of ironic because in the anime, Don has a Piplup. You know, I'm just saying, maybe me picking Turtwig is destiny. I'm just saying! I always find it kind of funny with this logic because in the anime, Barry also has a Piplup of sorts. He has a Napoleon in the anime, so it's kind of. kind of, kind of the same idea. <laughs> kind of funny. Not that it matters, but. Anyways, I'm done. I was with the professor and I pages the Pokedex. So, in a sense, I'm just like you. I just got a little head start on you. That's all. I mean, I teach you things. I don't need you, Zachary. Yeah, well, I've been playing Pokemon for God knows how long. Yeah, I can do this just fine on myself. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's this guy who I want to talk to. Yeah, Don's dad's over here. I'm Don's father. I'll be happy to assist you on your quest with the professor. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure we can count on you. Are you doubting me? I know I just started, but come on, man. Have, have some faith. <coughs> Zachary! Uh, hi. I, I, I know you're like 60 and your hair may not be that good, but I'm right next to you, buddy. I right, something good here. You should take this as well. And we get TM27, which, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I don't think this actually happens in Diamond and Pearl. I think this is new to Platinum. It's been a while, though. I could be wrong. That's a technical machine. The one that contains the move Return. Use a technical machine, or TM for short, teaches the move instantly to the Pokemon. Bear in mind, however, that a TM is single use only. The move Return gains power the more friendly your Pokemon is with you. It's up to you, of course, if you want to use the TM or not. I'll send you off with that wish. Your journey will be fun. Uh, thanks, buddy. Oh, wow. I didn't know the professor had TMs. Was, was he a trainer when he was young? Okay, Zachary, act as your mentor. I've had a bit more experience than you as a trainer and as a professor's assistant. Okay, follow me. Yay! Winded tutorial. Let's go. This building with the red roof is the Pokemon Center. It's a place that heals your Pokemon that have been hurt in battle, so you should go and see it. You can find a Pokemon Center most times. I lost the rhythm. <laughs> the building with the blue roof over here is the Pokemon. It's a shop where you can buy and sell items and medicine. Zachary, since you're a novice trainer, you won't be able to buy many kinds of merchandise. Don't let it bother you. But why don't you bring it up? Oh, that's right, Zachary. Don't you let your family know that you're going to be helping the professor with the Pokedex? You may need to go far away, so I think you should let someone know. Oh, before we go, heal your Pokemon at the Pokemon Center. There'll be a lot of scare that way. Okay, bye now. Thanks for the help, Don. I... Bye, I guess. Okay. So, uh, she did a pretty job, good job explaining it, however, I think we should go in here just for ourselves, just for a quick little showcase, I guess you could say. So this here is the Pokemon Center, and I cannot lie to you, out of all the Pokemon Center themes, I feel like Generation 4 has, like, the most relaxing one. There's just something really nice about it, it's very calming. Or maybe just nostalgia blinding me, you never know, it can always happen. But that being said, Don was not kidding, this over here is Nurse Joy. Hello, welcome to the Pokemon Center. We restore your entire Pokemon to full health. And guess what? It is by completely free! The government could never! Thank you for waiting. We restored your Pokemon to full health. We'll have to see you again. So not only did she heal your Pokemon, which is also, you know, obviously very handy. It's a complete full heal, completely for free on your entire uh, slotted team of Pokemon here. But something else that's very important about this and that, that the game doesn't really tell you about is that whatever Pokemon Center you heal at will be, be basically saved as a save point so that if you ever get knocked out of battle, you will show up back at that last Pokemon Center that you just last used. So it's basically a checkpoint of some sort as well. So even if you don't plan on really needing to heal your Pokemon, it's always worth stopping by one of them just to make sure you, you know, are keeping up your uh, save points per se. It doesn't save your game, but it makes it so you respawn where you want to basically. And since we're also over here, how about we go ahead and check out the Pokemart? Which, I'm gonna be quiet here for a second because this is the best Pokemon feed in the entire series. Hit it! I said to be quiet, but I can't. It's too catchy. Okay, that'll be quiet. Hit it for real! Be 
best store fiend in all of gaming. I do not care. I love this Pokemon fiend so much. And as cool as it is that in the future games, they combine the Pokemon Center and Pokemon into one building to save yourself some time. Man, not having this theme anymore really does suck, because oh my god, this theme is so good. That being said, though, this here is the Pokemart, and as you can imagine, being a Mart, it is a shop of sorts where you can buy yourself all sorts of stuff, including the legendary Poke Balls that we heard about last time. And I think we'll buy some for the road. We'll buy five, I think. There is actually a special bonus if you buy ten Pokeballs in one go, however, I'll be saving that for another time. We also have a potion over here, which heals 20 HP, as we've seen already. We have the Entity, which heals Poison, and we also have the Pearlize here, which heals Paralysis, which we'll talk about those status inflictments when they come up. However, we're not going to be seeing them for some time, so I think I'll pass on by. Man, I just love the Pokemon theme, though, so much. Oh my god, it's so good. It's so good for no reason. Also, the Sandgem Town theme itself is pretty good, too. Like I said, this game's music, phenomenal. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. And that being said, though, we have to go visit our mother, according to Dawn, so how about we use this brand new shark that we talked about before? Wee! So as you can see, we jumped and skipped all that tall grass right here. However, we can't go back anymore. So uh, it's a one-way shortcut, as mentioned. And I'm feeling a little bit adventurous today. How about we do it again? Wee! Jumping over ledges. Look at us go. Alrighty. Hey, mother! I've been conscripted to go fill an encyclopedia for some old man I just met. Oh no, Zachary, you're Pokemon healthy? It's a lit right now. Take a quick rest, dear. Oh yeah, I think my DS time is wrong at the current moment. I think if my DS thinks it's like 11 p.m. or something, it's actually like 2 p.m. when I'm recording this, but uh, don't worry about it. What is Zachary? Da -da 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 Protagonist talk. Oh, wow, the rest of the room asked you to do something that big? Okay, dear, go for it. Your mom's got your back. Well, I know, Zachary. I've got something that you'll find useful. We ourselves the journal, which is actually an item that I'm pretty sure has only appeared in Generation 4. Not even Heart, Gold, and Soul, Silver. Just these games, which is kind of cool. That's a journal. It helps keep the record of your daily events. Check it, and you'll deal with the remember what you did last. Ah, gee, a journey full of adventure. I envy you, kiddo. Well, you're not alone. You have your Pokemon with you. I wish I can go instead. I'm just joking, dear. Yep, Zachary. I'll be all right by myself. So you go and enjoy your adventure. You're supposed to do things and experience new sensations. It makes your mother happy, too. But come back sometimes. I like to see the kind of Pokemon you caught, dear. Hey, we're having a, 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 a mother-son moment here. Do you mind? Uh, excuse me, is my little berry here? Oh, no, he's not. Oh. And he must have left already. What to do? The boy shouted about going on an adventure, and then he bolted. He's a headstrong reckless. I at least wanted him to take this. Not to worry, Zachary will deliver that to him. Won't you, Zachary? Um, yes, Mom. Oh, really? You'll do that for me? Zachary, please take this to berry for me. We get ourselves a parcel. We're now a FedEx employee. Awesome. Bye-bye, Zachary. Enjoy your adventure. Let me think. Only my boy, he probably would have head straight to Jubilee City. Okay, please take that to my Barry. All right, we have a new objective, and we have a mother who uh, is giving me mixed feelings, but uh, I appreciate you, Mom. I really do. Away we go, though. Adventure calls. Although, I can't lie. I think out of all the, like, go goodbye speeches that you get with your mom in the opening of these Pokemon games, I think that one would be the best one. It actually makes me feel something. But that being said, we can't be sent them over for too long. We now are a FedEx employee, and we have a package to deliver the berries. We gotta go find this man. Off we go. Back to Sanjim Town. Away. Yeah, that was really quick, actually. We didn't run into any Pokemon. I'll take it, though. Now, what we're supposed to do now is go over this way and go check out uh, the next area. However, before we do that, I believe... Not only does this town have a good few houses here you can actually explore if you feel like it. However, there's also something down over this way, Route 219. And we can't really do anything here for the time being, for the most part. However, I do remember there being this down here. This here is obviously a Pokeball. Duh. However, what this actually signifies is that there is actually an item on the overworld for us to pick up for free. Which had an antidote inside. Who's leaving these Pokeballs around with all these random items inside? I don't know, but uh, they're here for us to pick up, so we better pick them up. So whenever you see that type of stuff, make sure you pick them up because it's free items. And who doesn't like free stuff? Me? Absolutely not. I love free stuff. And you know what? Before we get going on, I actually want to check out these houses. I, I haven't been in here for a while. You know what? Why not? Pokemon grow steadily stronger from battling against the other strong Pokemon. At first, it should, you should take it easy, though. Here, Pokemon are going to Pokemon Centers when you're leveling them up. Alright, so far, uh, pretty simple stuff. A good trainer is one that takes care not to let their Pokemon faint from losing HP. 
Uh, I'm noticing a theme here. I think everybody in this area just loves Pokemon's HP stats because they all talk about HP. Like guys on the route before just talking about HP. This house has people talking about HP. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe this is Don's house. Who are you? Oh, you're Zachary. Hey, you're doing that Pokedex thing for the professor. I don't think it's my big sister. Go for it. It is Don's house. Ah, so that Redwood fellow is back. He's quite a remarkable man. He's been studying Pokemon since way back when. My son and his grandchild help Rowan with his studies now. So this entire family is just helping Rowan. Good for them. Good for them. All right, enough screwing around. What you guys want me to do? Let's get going. On to Route 202. And Don has been waiting for me. Uh, it, 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 <laughs> don't hurt me. Oh, that's right. Zach, I'm showing you how to catch a Pokemon. I'll show you how to catch one, so just watch me, okay? And I guess what? I get to put my 3DS down now, because guess what? Don's gonna teach you guys for me. Here we go. Alright, time for an exciting battle. Dun, dun, dun. Oh my god, it's another beat dun, 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 dun. And here's her iconic Piplup. It's my Turtwig's already a higher level than. What are you doing, Don? You're supposed to be an experienced trainer. So as you can see, she's basically going to teach you here that you want to hit the opponent, lower their HP stat, with Pound in this case for Piplup. And upon lowering its HP stat... Okay, its HP is down. It's ready for a Pokeball. As you can see, she's going to go over here into her bag, go through her Pokeballs, which we also have some of those now ourselves, and she has 20 of them. Bang. She splurged on some Pokeballs. And upon weakening a Pokemon, she uses the Pokeball here. And, of all things, line up with luck, Lady Luck. It'll shake three times, and the Pokemon has been caught. There's more to it than that, but you know what, Don? You did a, you, you did a fine job explaining it for me. See? Isn't it neat? Actually, it's better to lower your target's HP more than I did. It's more to get the Pokemon's HP down as low as possible. This is because a healthy Pokemon is very difficult to catch. Oh, Pokemon also get easier to catch and make them sleep or something by using a Pokemon's move. Look, is that great? To get you started, I'll give you five Pokeballs. Uh, I already bought five, so I guess we have ten now, so cool. If you have lots of Pokemon with you, it'll be safer on long trips. Plus, it'll be a lot more fun having your Pokemon friends along. Okay, I need to get going. Bye now. Uh, thanks, Don, for the free stuff. Uh, Alright, moving on. So now that we have ourselves some Pokeballs, if we want to, we can actually catch ourselves some wild Pokemon. However, since I have a particular Pokemon of mine that I'm thinking I'm going to be catching... I'm not really going to be catching any Pokemon for the near future. However, speaking of Pokemon to catch, it's a Shinx! One of the iconic uh, fan favorites of this generation. Seriously, if you've ever talked to anybody who's played this game before, they've probably caught a Shinx and used one on their team at some point in their life. It's one of the iconic Sinnoh Pokemon. That being said, I personally am not going to be catching this thing. However, maybe I will catch one just to demonstrate how Pokemon's work myself. So, let's do this. Go for the tackle. Get it down to half HP. Ideally, you want to get a Pokemon into the red HP, which you're going to see right here. Before you try catching it. Uh, actually, uh, I think another tackle is going to KO this thing. I think it actually get down to the red HP. Uh, but you know what? I'll try. I was correct. Okay. Uh, we didn't catch a Shakes. It's okay. I I'm not trying to catch any Pokemon for the time being. I have a particular Pokemon of mine I want to use for this uh, Let's Play. So, uh... We'll be fine for the time being. More importantly though, this guy over here. You may be wondering, what is he doing staring at that tree? What's so funny about this tree that he's just staring at it? The actual reason is that he wants to ambush you. Dun dun dun. You're a Pokemon trainer, so am I. Our eyes meet, so battle we must. So this here is our actual first real trainer battle that's not including Barry. And uh, how trainer battles work is that if a trainer spots you in the overworld and they're a, a trainer, they will battle you the moment they see you. So if you don't want to get battle trainers, try to avoid them. In this case, though, this battle is unavoidable. And how I think I'm going to be doing this, because there is a lot of battles you're going to be doing throughout this entirety of the game. How I think I'm going to be doing this is that if a battle is required, or if I think it's interesting, I'll show it off in full. And if it's a battle that I think is skippable, and also just, you know, not that super interesting, I'll probably just fast forward it or cut it out entirely. But that being said, though, it's one of our first trainer battles here. I guess a little five starly at that, which is actually kind of close to our level, so... Obviously, we're not, we're not going to skip our first trainer battle here, obviously. That being said, the strategy here is uh, pretty much the same as every other battle. Just go for tackles. There we go, and one more for the road. It's growling at me. That's terrifying to think about. Can you imagine a bird just growling at you? What would you do if a bird started growling at you? I don't know what I'd do. I I, I think I'd be scared. 
personally. Okay, 60 experience points for our travel. As you can see, we get way more experience battling trainers than wild Pokemon. So if you ever try to get your Pokemon levels up, battling trainers is definitely recommended. There we go. Younger Tristan has been defeated. And as you can see as well, we also got ourselves some money for defeating a trainer as well. So overall, battling trainers is, in my opinion, much more effective than battling wild Pokemon if you ever need to get experience or just train your Pokemon whatsoever. Like, you get way more reward out of it. However, more importantly, our trainer took a little bit of a beating during that battle. So how about we go over here to our bag, use a potion, and bring our Turtwig back up to full HP. Power of a potion, baby. Not bad. Thanks for the freebie, Pokemon man. Now we're fine. And what does the sign say? Trainer tips. All Pokemon that are involved in a battle earn experience points. The more Pokemon battle, the stronger they will become. Solid advice. Thank you, signboard. I will never forget you. And once again, we have ourselves another battle here that is completely unavoidable. I spy with my little eye a trainer. A battle, please. We'll do, my lady. <laughs> Last Natalie, and she has. Another Bidoof! Get used to seeing this guy for a little time, because Bidoof are very common in the early game. <laughs> With that being said, though, the strategy here is the same as always, baby! Tackle, tackle, and tackle again! Because we have, like, no moves at the Chromo. However, as your Pokemon level up, you'll learn more moves. And if I wanted to, I could actually use the TM we got from Professor Rome to learn Return. However, I'm going to skip on that for the time being. There we go. And look at the experience points. About half a level, not bad. Oh, boo, I can't win. Ah, don't at least I'll get beat up over it. You, you know, I'm just simply that powerful. Keep running across over here, and... Well, you know what, why not? I think this one's actually avoidable. I, 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 mm, I'm not too sure. Let's have a Pokemon battle. Humph, but I'm gonna win. Don't you humph at me, young lad. Trainer Youngster Logan has a Burmy. This is a Pokemon that I don't think was here in Diamond and Pearl. I think this trainer has a completely different Pokemon in Diamond and Pearl. Uh, Burmy here, however, uh, is a grass type just like Turtwig. So uh, normally this would be kind of a stalemate. However, uh, because we're both low level, uh, it's time to have a tackle off, baby. Now one of the downsides is that I'm pretty sure compared to the other two starters of Piplup and Chimchar, Turtwig takes a while to learn any other moves. And just basically it just has tackle and withdraw for a little bit of time. However, have no fear, it will catch up soon. In fact, I think it might actually learn a new move at level 9. Yeah, we got ourselves our very first grass move in Exorb. Not bad. We'll talk about that next battle we get into. You beat me, you got talent. That's what I'm saying, you know, you know, I, I, I may be a new starting trainer, but you know, my turtles are at level 9. What are you gonna do about that? And I think this is the perfect time to show off our brand new move we just got here, so we just ran into a wild Chinx. So this here is our brand new move that we just learned, Exorb. Exorb is a very weak grass type move. It is a special type grass move. However, there is something in this game called same type attack bonus. Since Turtwig is a grass type Pokemon, its grass type moves will actually be stronger than its other type of moves. So it's actually in your best benefit to use moves that are of your same typing whenever possible. Obviously, sometimes it's not the case because sometimes the opponent Pokemon has a Pokemon that, you know, matches up well into that type. But overall, even though Exorb is a relatively weak move, it still does a fair amount of damage because we have the same type of attack bonus going on. And if you ever hear me say the term stab, that's just an abbreviation for same type attack bonus, so just keep that in mind. Very useful thing to know though, because it's gonna make your damage do way more throughout the entirety of the game if you know what same type attack bonus is, so it's definitely worth keeping in mind. One more Exorb for the road, and as you can see, another bonus of Exorb, as you can see that's for the battle, is that it actually heals you for half the damage you deal with Exorb, so not a bad move, not a bad move at all. Alrighty, and ooh, freebie. Never mind, not a freebie. Well, I mean, technically still a freebie, we have to get through the almighty Bidoof to collect it. So is it really a freebie? I think it's, a, it's more of a trial than a freebie at this point. Go for another Exorb, there we go. Now the good news that we have Exorb here is that like, even though they... Actually, it's still doing one damage to me. <laughs> What I was going to say, though, is that I kind of don't really need to worry about using potions for the time being, because I can just keep healing back all the damage I take. Look, look, isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Isn't that wonderful having a healing move? The other two stars don't get a piece of this. No, uh, uh, they have attacking moves, you know. They, they can't heal themselves. The mighty Bentley. There we go. 
Now nah, let's go pick up a free item, shall we? It was a potion, which is <laughs> kind of ironic because I was just talking about the fact that I'm probably not going to need potions for a little bit because I have Exorb now. Kind of funny. With that being said, though, looks like we made some sort of destination. Jubilife City. We heard about this, actually. And since we made it through these routes and over here to our next big city on the map, with this nice jazzy tune in the background, I think we'll call it here for this time being, or for the time, I don't like to say it like that. I think we'll call it here for the time being and pick up next episode into Jubilife City, where we can hopefully find Barry and deliver this parcel for his mom, because that boy keeps running off and someone needs to find him, dang it. This, F this uh, FedEx worker is getting his paycheck. It was the last thing he does. All jokes aside, though, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and we'll be doing just that in the next episode. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.